I'm Mark Abrams. I'm the editor of the Annals of Improbable Research. I also organize the Ig Nobel Prize ceremony. You can see all this at improbable.com. So here's one thing I learned at this conference. About oh, eight years ago, we gave one of the Ig Nobel Prizes to two teams of scientists who discovered about the same thing simultaneously, but working independently. One team is Canadian and Scottish. The other team is Swedish. Both of them discovered that herrings, the little fish, uh, seem to communicate by farting. And that word farting has a different definition than you may expect. It's not through the digestive system, it's through the separate system that uh, channels air that's used to control the amount of buoyancy the fish has, nevertheless. Anyway, at the Ig Nobel ceremony that year, where the two groups met each other for the first time, we learned the best part of the story, which we really hadn't known about. The Swedish team, unlike the other one, wasn't studying this stuff just because it's fish and that's what they do. They were brought into this type of research by the Swedish government at the highest levels. The Swedish government was convinced that their neighbor, Russia, was sending submarines to spy on them. And they were convinced in particular that the Russian government was sending submarines into Stockholm Harbor. But they wanted proof of this. So they had put microphones in the water in Stockholm Harbor and they came up with a recording that sounded like a, a rapid metallic clicking. And they were convinced, all right, this is it, we've got evidence, we're gonna be able to get up in public and convince, uh, excuse me, this is it, we're, we have evidence, we're gonna be able to get up in public and accuse the Russians justifiably of doing this. And to do it properly, they convened a group of scientists of different disciplines from across Sweden to look at the various parts of this evidence and write up reports. They got two of the best marine biologists, these are people who study fish and mammals who live in the sea, to look at this. The two marine biologists listened to the evidence and they said, yes, yes, that's a fine recording you have, but that's not a submarine, that's a fish. And give us a little time, we'll tell you even what kind of fish it is. So they did some experiments and they discovered that this clicking sound, this metallic sound, was actually coming from herrings, and it was herrings farting, it was not Russian spy submarines. They told this to the government, and I believe it was the Prime Minister on down had been all geared to launch this public thing. And this was about the last thing anyone high up in the government wanted to hear, and they fought the recommendation, but in the end they decided we can't announce this because these scientists will not go along with it. So this didn't happen, this public announcement. All right, uh, something I just learned a couple days ago, talking to one of the Swedish journalists here who knows this story, is that the highest level Swedish politician, I believe it was the prime minister, but I, I may be slightly misremembering, but anyway, one of the top Swedish government officials is still going around saying those scientists were wrong. It was not herring, farting, it was not herring, it was submarines. So it seems there's a collision of truths coming down the line. It could happen next month. I'm going to be in Stockholm with those scientists doing some talks. They're going to talk about this. And one of those scientists is planning to write a book about this. And apparently, almost apparently in Sweden, very few people have heard this story. It's not secret, but the story just has not gotten out. So we're all interested to see at what point does public opinion catch up with this, and do we have politicians put in a position of having to get up and, uh, and say something that they don't want to say?